And now, critical tools from the state of Ohio. Hey, good morning, and thank you for being here to, for the panel that talks about the critical tools from the state of Ohio. My name is Tim Sweeney, I'm with Jobs Ohio. And with us, we have uh, two distinguished panelists that I'd like to briefly introduce before we have them talk about their organization. First, Dave Nestick. Dave is the SS, uh, STTR Program Director at the Ohio Federal Research Network. Dave has more than 24, 20 years experience in technology uh, company formation, incubation, development, and economic development. He has a very diverse uh, technology fields in DNA probe technology, medical electronics, engineering, manufacturing, automation, and molecular biology. And he has founded two consumer product startups. So Dave, thank you for being here and being a member of the panel. Also with us is Phil Rotterman. Phil is with Fastlane. Fastlane is Ohio uh, Development Services Agency Manufacturing Extension Partnership in the Dayton region. Prior to launching Fastlane in 2013, Phil spent 25 years at ITW, uh, Hobart Corporation, in commercial food and equipment manufacturing. He spent 17 years in new product development, holds six patents, and served as the vice president and general manager for the last 12 years in a P&L role uh, for five factories across North America. So Phil, thank you for being here. In, in my role as Jobs Ohio, I'm the sector director of advanced manufacturing and aerospace at Jobs Ohio. Uh, my focus is high technology, advanced manufacturing, aerospace, and a background in, in defense. So my work background is in satellites, launch vehicle, defense programs, and transportation. And my background uh, work experiences with L3 Communications, Raytheon, and Texas Instruments. So I'm happy to, to see here, be a part of this panel. Um, what I'd like to do is uh, first, let's start by talking about uh, areas of specialty here for Ohio. Each of you represents the state of Ohio and provide a very different service. So with that, let's start with Dave. Uh, if you could tell us about your organization and where you intersect with small business. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Um, the Ohio Federal Research Network, we're a program of um, parallax advanced uh, research funded by the Ohio De um, Department of Higher Education. And uh, uh, we work in partnership with uh, Ohio State University on this. And uh, what, what the program primarily focuses on is it, it really seeks to, to, to build a vibrant collaborative research network among Ohio's university assets. And we do this by funding projects that will include, each project includes multiple university researchers coupled with industry partners. And the projects are aimed at addressing, you know, the research needs of the federal labs uh, in Ohio. So the chief focus is to create those jobs that are um, high value to Ohio's economy and, and also to train university and Ohio industry to compete for federal uh, research funding. Um, so, you know, we've established a network that includes those labs in Ohio and federal facilities of Air Force Research Lab, um, NASA Glenn, uh, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, and the Naval Medical Research Unit in Dayton, as well as Ohio's Adjutant General and, and the Department of Transportation. So through our project funding, you know, we create these collaborations that kind of break down those silos that exist between multiple universities in Ohio to get researchers at different institutes to collaborate with each other. But then we also, um, the projects have to include a, a, an industry partner that has the capability of commercializing the research that gets developed. And then the project itself also has to uh, address a need that's verified with somebody within one of the federal labs in Ohio. So what this does is it kind of sets these project teams up to continue working into the future as a collaborative group to then, once they're funded through OFRN funding, um, to then pursue federal funding in the SBIR or STTR program or other opportunities that come out of those labs to address you know, the needs of the federal government. Very good, Dave. And, and I know the, the connections that the OFRN has and really bringing uh, 
not only the innovators together, but the federal labs, the, uh, the, the universities, the colleges really uh, ties together all the innovation that, that really is required for that at early stage, uh, uh, those early stage companies. And that does provide that link to commercialization. So thanks for that, Dave, appreciate that, that insight. Uh, mm -hmm. Next up is uh, Phil, can you talk about Fastlane and how it provides a connection for small businesses? Sure, Tim, thanks. Um, first of all, I wanna thank the attendees who are on here to, to engage with us and listen to us talk about these tools because uh, we're passionate about what we do and we're happy to tell folks about uh, the opportunities they have to use resources from the state. Um, you know, 2020 has been really challenging for a lot of reasons we know and coronavirus is the big part. It's, it's challenging now as it's been all year, but I believe and my team believes that uh, there's certainly uh, definitely a time for opportunity here particularly with those firms who want to be bold enough to innovate. So that's what we're here to talk about. We became a sponsor of this event for WBI because they're shining a light on innovation. And uh, we think that helping folks who want to innovate um, and understand these tools is, is valuable this morning. So Fastlane, as an MEP, it stands for Manufacturers Extension Partnership, as Tim introduced us. There's 51 centers across the country and uh, each one in each state plus Puerto Rico. So in Ohio, Fastlane has a Dayton region. We help, our mission is completely focused on small and medium for-profit manufacturing businesses to grow by improving their operations. That improvement can come in a number of different forms. It could be in their quality of the products. It could be in the new product development they're working on, their cost reduction of what their production currently is, uh, improvements in their inventory position, their workflow of their production, the delivery to the customers, improvements in their marketing or in their workforce and, and, and helping their workforce uh, be better able to adapt new technologies. So all these areas I've talked about, we bring in um, resources to assist those manufacturers in improving their own companies. Uh, it's aimed at growing manufacturing because there's a good paying job as, as many of you all know that are involved uh, in economic development. And if you improve the manufacturing operations, they will grow the jobs. Our process with these for-profit manufacturers is, tends to be um, one where we go in first and we do a tour of the facility, we discuss their current strategic initiatives, and we create a plan with them and we uh, assist them in finding solutions to those challenges that they're facing right now in this quarter or this month or this year. And we find uh, solutions and, and potential resources for them to attack those challenges, and we do it in a cost-effective manner. Uh, we will even recommend a client hire an outside company rather than ourselves because that other vendor may be able to do it faster, better, cheaper, quicker, whatever. Um, our goal is to help them get their problem solved in the quickest manner possible. We want to become that trusted third party. That's something we've ate, drink, and sleep over the last eight years that Fastlane's been around. And for that trusted third party, many of these manufacturers always have lots of uh, follow-up projects. So if we can get them to trust us, then we can also get them to come back on the next project. We do better when they do better. It's kind of one of those, uh, um, there's, a, there's a commercial on TV that talks about folks who do investments, right? Uh, same thing here. Um, after a project is done with us, uh, six months later, a manufacturing company gets uh, an email from a third party and they ask them what happened. And there are 10 questions to answer. Things about jobs, did you hire anybody? Things about cost savings. Did you have any increased sales? Did you have new investment? Did you have a cost avoidance? So those things are answered. And then they collaborate, uh, they collect all that data from across the country, the third party does, and we get a grade. So when our grades are big and we're moving the needle for our companies, we get our funding to keep intact and we get increases in funding because of it. And we're having a good run right now. Fastlane's had an excellent report card for the past uh, four quarters. We've been 100%, which is leads the state. So we're really proud about that. In our um, efforts, we've put our resources to work in assisting startups from time to time. It's not our main focus, but we do it oftentimes, partly because we're part of UDRI. We have 700 researchers. There's a lot of potential there for new technologies. So for those entrepreneurs who are producing a product, we are a resource to them. Uh, we help by finding someone who can manufacture the product for the, or become a supplier to one of the key components of their product. We've also assisted in um, what we call prototyping or short run production. So these are areas that we can talk about more as the panel goes on, but that's a quick introduction to what we do at Fastlane and the MVP system. Thanks, Phil. And uh, I can't speak uh, enough about uh, the MEP, the Fastlane organization that we have uh, here in the state. 
Uh, it's amazing asset as, as we look to attract companies to the state or look to grow companies and be that connector. Uh, Fastlane certainly serves in that role and uh, provides a lot of uh, uh, expertise that, to help companies as they look to that manufacturing. Uh, so thanks, Phil, for that. I, I'd like to briefly talk about Jobs Ohio and uh, the role that Jobs Ohio plays at the intersection of small business. Uh, first, for Jobs Ohio, uh, Jobs Ohio is the lead economic development organization for the state of Ohio. We work with uh, six regional partners across the state in support of job growth. Uh, we work with companies on site selection, expansion, incentives, company attractions, workforce development, and really that connector to sectors and to the supply chain. So you can see there's an, a connection here between what we're doing with the Fast Lane and OFRN. There is a collaboration that we're able to do. Uh, Jobs Ohio concentrates on 10 sectors of Ohio's economy. I represent the advanced manufacturing, aerospace, and aviation sector. Uh, Ohio is the third largest manufacturing state, so we have the power and strength of manufacturing here, and our focus is on job creation. We speak to some of the strategic innovations that we have uh, in advanced manufacturing and aerospace. First, in the advanced manufacturing sector, uh, additive manufacturing and 3D printing, uh, Ohio is the center of excellence. As I look across the state and number of service providers, materials suppliers, and machinery equipment supplier, Ohio accelerates. And also in additive manufacturing education, K-12, and, and through college level. So great concentration in the 3D printing space. Another strategic innovation area is automation. Ohio is demonstrating innovation in smart manufacturing, also known as the connected factory. In Northeast Ohio, smart manufacturing cluster is focused on growth and adoption of the industrial internet of things. The cluster is industry driven, demonstrates excellent collaboration in the smart factory and industry 4.0. Another area is advanced materials. So Ohio continues the innovation and light weighting of materials, both in advanced composites and carbon fiber and supports light weighting of electric vehicles and the future of air taxis. Uh, Jobs Ohio has made investment in the Institute of Advanced Composites and Manufacturing Innovation, or IACME, and to provide that conduit for businesses uh, to be able to grow. And finally, in, in autonomy or smart mobility, Ohio is demonstrating leadership in advanced air mobility, which includes small package delivery by air and the future of air passenger taxi. Ohio is making strategic investment in the infrastructure to enable electric vertical takeoff and landing here in the state. And Ohio's FAA certified unmanned traffic management system, Sky Vision, is providing the detect and void supporting the UAS and in the national airspace. Ohio is also planning for the future mode of transportation on the I-71, I-75 corridor, driven by the needs of commercial businesses. So we have some great innovation going on. Let me speak to some of Jobs Ohio programs where it intersects with small business. So Jobs Ohio supports many size companies. For this venue, it's best to engage Jobs Ohio in the scale-up phase. Uh, this, uh, these companies focus on moving, uh, moving into development or in production. And you can see how, as you're going to that phase, that's when you also want to bring in the fast lane or in the development phase where you have the OFRN and, and to the commercialization. So we are that connector and can help uh, connect into local and regional manufacturers. Uh, as for Jobs Ohio's tools, we have grants and loans, uh, economic development grants for uh, site uh, improvements or site uh, development, workforce grants, revitalization of brownfield sites, and then talent services as you're trying to target uh, uh, traction of workforce. This also on tax credits, we work with tax authorities on payroll tax credits for job creation, and then uh, Jobs Ohio supports technology innovation through the R&D Center Grant. So the R&D Grant supports new innovation being created here in Ohio. So I hope that provides insight to the sector's technology focus areas and tools that are available to support company growth. So that's, uh, that's a bit about uh, Jobs Ohio. Now, before we get into the topics uh, for the panelists, I'd like to invite all attendees 
if they have a question related to the company, please uh, put that in the chat and we'll, we'll be sure and push those out uh, and, and talk about those here among the panelists. The first topic I'd like to talk about is, is for startups. And uh, Dave, if you could, uh, representing the Ohio Federal Research Net Network, what kinds of startups are you supporting? And is it limited to just technology companies? Well, the, the, most of the startups that we do work with are technology based because a lot of the tech, a lot of the projects come out of uh, university based uh, research. But we do have people that are in the in in the the network of uh, funded projects that are manufacturing related um, because you know as these projects get funded as the technology gets developed you know there's always some manufacturing that's involved in in bringing you know the the research to to reality uh, so uh, you know we have we we tend to work a lot with the commercialization people at the universities also because you know these projects have resulted in in numerous spinouts from universities and, and startups uh, out of universities, and um, you know, and we've also worked with uh, you know you mentioned you know Ohio's preeminence in in the UAV space and what's being invested for VTOL in that um, we a, a, a few of our a couple of our rounds have been focused on the UAV. Um, marketplace and we've seen a lot of startup companies in that space get involved with OFRN funded projects. And these are not small projects. These are, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands to, to uh, you know, a, a million to $2 million projects. So it's significant funding to get these startups, you know, from um, their early stages through uh, development stages and, and eventual demonstration. Very good. Um, uh, this one's for Phil. Phil, is there a fast lane associate association in Texas? Do you know uh, if there's a network there? Yes, there is. Um, like I said before, there's a MEP center in each state. Um, larger states like like Texas would be, and like Ohio and California are. There's a there's one um, organization who receives the contract from the federal government. Here in Ohio, I'll just give you an example. The ODSA gets it, so I'm I'm a subrecipient to ODSA, so the Development Services Agency gets the contract, and they pass out, which is really I'm I'm really thrilled with how they do it. I mean, 99.9 percent .9 of the dollars that come into the state go right out, and the state actually puts state dollars in with it, so we do really well in Ohio. Uh, Texas is called TMAC. Um, I have some contacts I can probably uh, put, put to the person whoever's asking the question, and um, I. I know a lot of the states around us, like Indiana, for instance, is one organization. It's Purdue, Purdue, Purdue University MEP Center, and they have people around the state. Kentucky's the same thing. It's with uh, Western Kentucky University has that contract. Uh, Pennsylvania's like Ohio. They'll have like six regional or seven regional centers. So different states do it differently, but it's all one contract with someone in the state, and either that person does the whole state for the smaller states, or they have uh, subrecipients like we have in Ohio. I can get uh, contact information to whoever asked that question uh, for TMAC in Texas. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Dave, this question's for you. Uh, relative to working with early stage businesses, how do you position them for growth opportunities? What's involved in that? Well, what's, uh, what's nice is that we've got a, a couple programs under Parallax that we, that we operate and they kind of feed into each other. Um, so OFRN uh, is, is, you know, partners the, the, the small business or the startup with the university researcher and, and helps in the development of new technologies. And it's, 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 early, it, it's early stage development um, type work that feeds into the SBIR and STTR program. We have another group then called APEX that is a, what's called a partnership intermediary with the uh, U.S. Air Force. And I operate a, an STTR program there that then assists these companies with pursuing federal funding and SBIR and STTR to continue development and to build deeper relationships with um, the U.S. Air Force. So, um, for example, a lot of the companies that we funded during uh, rounds uh, three and four uh, participated in an STTR competition over the summer called Agility Prime that the Air Force conducted. And um, I can't remember the exact number, but I think it was nearly 100% of the companies that participated that we assisted that came out of OFRN projects actually got awards in Agility Prime. 
And that was an additional, it's a phase one of 150,000 leading to, you know, 750 to 1.5 million phase twos. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a progression because you're going through these development stages of advanced technology of, you know, we want to make sure that the, the, the funding lifeline keeps coming for these uh, small businesses that it, that's non-dilutive funding, you know, that, that, that adds, augments, and, and fortifies outside investment funding. Well, and I, I like the model that you have there, Dave. Uh, I had the neat opportunity to be able to see some of the demonstrations this summer of the technology that's coming out of universities and the, the network that you have there at Ohio Federal Research Network. So, so yeah, it's a great model. It's actually a cutting metal and actually building hardware. So yeah. uh, it, it's a good model. Um, relative to the network, um, uh, for and networks are very critical to startups as they try to uh, align financing and the business and and really building that forecast. How can the OFRN amplify the startup network? Well, it's a that's a good question. Um, so we tend to release uh, projects in rounds. So we've done round one, round two, you know, up to round four, and we now have a round five that's coming out soon. And um, but in between rounds, we we keep working to to build and further and deepen the network uh, among the universities and the and the industry and the, and the businesses within Ohio. And it's not it's not just in Ohio itself, but we're also reaching out to those prime contractors and that 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 partner with uh, some of the smaller businesses in order to draw them into. Um, uh, marketing or industry channels that require a, a, a larger player sometimes. Um, so we are constantly building that network in order to build value around the projects that, that we, we put funding into because the, the outcome of those projects, we, we want them to be commercializable products that actually end up in jobs. So it's important that we establish and keep nurturing that network. Right. So people can connect with us you know, at any time and you know we have we we maintain that network that, that can expand their efforts as well. Yeah, and from a Jobs Ohio perspective, we we look to, to what is that path on commercialization and getting into the volume production, and that's where we play a, a much larger role in supporting that. And so having that pathway and having that plan in place really sets it up for success. And uh, and then I know from a, not only from the prime, but it's also to the the federal agencies that you know uh, had the need ultimately, and uh, having that network in place also, I think is, is equally as important. It, it really is. In Ohio, has got some remarkable interconnected organizations. You know, from the MEPs to the to the earlier stage OFRN to Jobs Ohio, there for the scale up. It's a it's a a, a very remarkable network of organizations for small businesses to plug into. That's, that's great. Thank you. Um, this is uh, for you, Phil. Uh, is, there, is this the time when companies need to start building relationships with prime contractors? You know, you know I, I think um, absolutely, yes. It all depends on your uh, product or service or your idea of your startup or, or of your small business that you're trying to get in. Um, there are, um, if you haven't done much of that before, to actually become part of the supply chain of, of the government, and the DOD is even a special form of the government. Um, I've learned over the years that, that this is a, there's, there's a little more involved with that, right? And, and we have folks we can send you to, by the way. Um, there are people who are, who their whole task is how to do business with the government. And, and we, we know people that can do that for you. So starting a relationship is key because there are decisions to be made. Just, this is in the profit world where, where we have purchasing and procurement experts making decisions on who, to, who their suppliers will be whether you're building cars or, or buses or, or food equipment, where I came from, um, you, you make decisions on who the supplier needs to be. So having that relationship is important. So um, we, uh, in, working mostly in the for-profit world, Fastlane um, is not a, a perfect place to turn to for establishing those relationships of a prime, say, for instance. But we are getting more involved in, in something I'll talk about a little bit later, too, is this new uh agreement that we've just working on with the state, and that's to become part of the uh, Ohio defense manufacturing community. So we're going to look at the primes in Ohio, the OEMs, if you will, the tank plant in Lima, and others like that, that, that make major components for DOD, 
and their supply chain and trying to improve them with the adoption of industry 4.0 type things. So I think we're going to become an even better player to help people get introduced to those um, larger OEMs. Very good. And uh, recognizing Fastline's role in manufacturing, what do you what do uh, what do small businesses need to know from a manufacturing perspective at this stage, early stage, you know, they're, they're in the early stage of growth. What does that mean? And how, how does it, how do they do that connection? Well, my opinion is whether you're a startup or whether you're a small business, maybe an established company that's, that's, that's starting up a new production line. Um, we've helped those types of organizations, those entrepreneurial folks with uh, prototypes, and we've also helped with what's called short run production, which is, you know, after you get prototypes made and you've shown feasibility, um, how do you start with the first initial tooling? How do you get the first hundred or the first two or three hundred or, or maybe a thousand? Um, what do you do there? Because there's no revenue coming in. And how do you get through that? It's a very difficult time for startups. So um, we've helped people in those areas with both of those because we know companies that can perform those tasks. And sometimes we have uh, researchers at UDRI, where, where we're part of, who can actually uh, bring um, some resources to bear on those issues as well. Lastly, I'd say we've helped uh, vet opportunity, um, vet uh, technology, excuse me, for people that are still in the development mode, right? Vetting, does their, does their technology do what it says it's supposed to? Does it, does it meet a certification that's required? Does it does it in fact perform better than what's already out there? You know, and, and, and there's their need, and sometimes we even do some business related things as far as we know suppliers of ours who can do some market research and determine, you know, theirs is a unique and, and a better for whatever uh, the task being performed and help people understand that this is a great idea or, oh, by the way, this is maybe not as what's art, good as art, what's already out there and protecting IP are things we've done with people as well. So. There's a lot of different areas that startups, depending on where they are and what they need, that we can either help for them or we can we can uh, uh, assist them to get down the road further to commercialization. Well, and and that you bring up a good point, Phil, as far as uh, down the road, and part of that is, you know, do I make or do I buy, and and do I is there an existing manufacturer that can do some or all the process that I have, so that I can get to market quicker. So having that network, um, certainly that, that you have there at Fastlane, and uh, certainly as we reach across uh, our network at Jobs Ohio, we have that opportunity to be able to help a company make those decisions and maybe quicker and, uh, and help make that connection. To and, fill the gaps there, uh, Tim, I think I would even categorize our ability to assist an entrepreneur or a, or a, or a startup company um, given our mission to help grow manufacturing, Fastlane's got four buckets of resources that I think are worth pointing out here. We have our own team of manufacturing growth experts who are out there all the time doing these kinds of things that we've talked about. Um, our second bucket would be the 700 plus researchers that work at UDRI. I'm part of the organization. My team knows most of them. We don't know all of them. Some work at Wright Air Force Base. We don't know every single one, but we know a lot of them. And they are some of the smartest people in the world. Um, they, they have technologies on very wide uh, and, and, and a, a number of large different technical experts that we can bring these subject matter experts to help people vet their opportunities. The third bucket is our partner companies. These are firms that do things that we don't do specifically. They help with cyber and cybersecurity. They help with 3D printing. They can do marketing for startup firms and help them look at new markets, do market research perhaps. They can help with quality and doing taking you get to get an ISO 9000 or get an AS9100 if you have a technology that's supposed to go on a on a on a, a flying device. So those type of specializing companies are partners of ours. We can turn to them. And then last one is previous clients. We've been doing this for eight years. We have hundreds of companies we've helped. We've been on their shop floors. We understand their capabilities. So sometimes those new unique capabilities are required for, for a new entrepreneur who's doing something and we can turn them to a, a prior client. So those are the areas we help um, and turn to our vast network of folks that can assist with whatever unique issue a uh, startup company might have. Uh, tell me about, uh, uh, Phil, uh, tell me about the role of universities in engagement with small businesses 
um, are subject matter experts still available to small business or how does that work? Um, it's, it can be difficult because most often there's two reasons. The subject matter experts, uh, these PhDs are working on something pretty elaborate that, that they have multi-year contracts with some specific thing, say right at Air Force Base type of a project. Um, we have good relationships so that we can actually get in there and get some of their hours and some of their time, but they're not cheap, right? So, so we've got to find a way to fund that. Um, so, so if a startup firm has the ability to get a few hours of this expertise from this uh, subject matter expert, that's, that's a good resource. So we can find them, we can usually get them away. Every once in a while, they get all completely up, tied up with overtime and doing something specific for the Air Force customer that they might be working on. But that we don't have that problem too much. We actually are able to get in and get time and we can bring that subject matter expert to our manufacturer or to our, um, to our entrepreneur to give them some assistance. And every once in a while, we have grants. Um, these grants come in the forms of specific technologies. They come in the form of, of um, cons consultation, if you will. If we can get our hands on that money, we can actually help take some of the manufacturer's money or some of the entrepreneur's money and stretch it further. You know, if we got $10,000 worth of work to do with, this, with these two or three subject matter experts at UDRI, maybe I can get five grand from a grant. And then you, so the entrepreneur might take his $5,000 of their money and I can match it and then we can go off and get $10,000 of the work done. So we stretch their dollars further. That's not all the time, but sometimes we have the ability to have that from the state of Ohio who's, who's made these things available for folks. And we, we try to do exactly that, take those dollars and really uh, put them towards a project that's being a needle moving project for a company we always want, in our opinion is, we always want them to have skin in the game. Don't, don't come to us with your hand out because that's just the, the way we work. We, we, we believe it's important to you. It's going to move the needle for your company and actually get you to success. You should have some of your skin in the game and we'll try to find some ways to make it go further. Very good. Thanks, Phil. Dave, any comment that you'd say is interacting with small businesses and uh, working with, uh, uh, with universities? In other words, it's it's really it's now being commercialized. Is there any reach back? Do you see that opportunity or a connection there? Yeah, the kind of projects that we work with and the kind of companies, you know, tend to create long longer term relationships with the university researchers because you know that's the origin of some of the the products that are coming out. Um, in a number of cases, we've had. You know, like in our earlier rounds, rounds one and round two, they were pretty broad as far as the technology goes. So there was some component parts like uh, different chemistries and batteries or, or uh, you know, different, um, uh, you know, anode materials or, or uh, you know, er different component type things that, that, were, that we were funding. Um, and, uh, and those progressed then to system type projects. So we wanted to encourage those that were developing different component type things to, to, to bid on projects that were more um, uh, system related. So using some of those component technologies and putting them together, you know, with uh, multiple other project partners, you know, to create systems. And those relationships continued. So a lot of the relationships that started in, in the earlier rounds continued into the, to the further rounds. And we've seen you know, the establishment of, of longer term partnerships uh, with university researchers and some of the industry that's involved um, as, you know, other opportunities came up, you know, further uh, federal dollars or even product development related type things. So it's, um, you know, it's, it, there's, there's always this perception that it's not easy to work with a university in that, but if you if you get into it, if you understand it, if you start building the relationships, it's just like anything else. It has a it has a system, it has a way of working, and you can build that relationship and, and you can work it. And, and we tend to try to help make that happen. I mean, we we um, you know we employ commercialization people that kind of work in the project. We're, they're they're you know we um, you know we. In the, in the earlier rounds, you know, I was engaged at OFRN as a commercialization executive, and I would kind of be a partner in the project, keeping an eye out for the relationship between the university and the industry partner to make sure that certain things were taking place. You know, were invention disclosures filed or 
You know, are you talking with the tech transfer office to make sure that you got licensing handled, you know, and, and just making sure that agreements are in place so that, so that things can, can move forward. So once the universities and the small businesses get used to that and how it goes back and forth, you know, they then seem to, you know, maintain those relationships and keep looking for further opportunity. You know, you tend to work with those people that you know and you trust. And when, when, we're, when we're, you know, breaking down that wall and introducing two people, which, you know, I want to mention also in this current round, we, um, we, we took something we were doing in Apex and we're using it now in the current OFRN round five where we're, we have a matchmaking function. So if you go to the website, you know, ohiofrn.org, you can see a link to a, a team matchmaking function. So if you are a small business and you wanna participate in an OFRN project, but you don't have a, research in, uh, a, a researcher at a university as a partner, you can put information in and we'll help link you up. You know, so we'll, we'll be proactive in creating those relationships. And likewise, since it requires a couple of two universities at a minimum in a project, if you're a university researcher and you need an industry partner, or if you need another university partner, you know, this can help you do that too. So, um, so anyhow, we really try to, you know, form, formulate those, those relationships and, and keep them going, you know, into the future for the benefit that they provide both to the university and to the small business. Very good. Well, you mentioned research organizations. Uh, how should they stay engaged? You mentioned that the OFRN requires two uh, universities uh, to be a part of that. How can the research organizations remain engaged uh, to support uh, what you're doing there? Um, well, uh, you keep in touch. I mean, we do information sessions. You know, we connect with, you know, eat, most every university has a point person that looks for these opportunities and we stay in touch with those point people to make sure that the information is going out. Um, you know, we will have, uh, you know, we're, we're available to talk to groups of, of researchers within a university. I just had one yesterday at Ohio State. I'll probably do another one at Ohio University next, next month. Um, we'll do it at any university that, that wants to. And we'll, we'll you know, like I, I mentioned before, we maintain this network on an ongoing basis. And if anybody has an interest in, in connecting with anybody in small business, you know, we can um, help facilitate that and, and you know, search through our networks to see who's an appropriate match for what a, an Ohio university might be looking for. Thanks, Dave. I'd like to mention uh, those that are attending this um, event, please, uh, if you have questions, enter them in the chat and we'll, we'll tee them up for the, the panel here. Uh, with that, um, moving to the next topic here, um, we heard earlier a panel describing the process of tech identification and maturation of pipelines. Uh, Phil, for you, how do you, how do your tools, the work that you're doing at Fastlane, support these pipelines? Can you speak to that? Glad to. Thanks, Tim. Good question. Um, I know that uh, we are pretty tight with uh, in our region here in Dayton. It's the Entrepreneur Center. Scott Korndike and his team, a good friend of mine, we, we, uh, we work with them in two ways. We will have people who know Fastlane because they got introduced to us via our marketing and outreach. And we'll have something that will that, that be doing some service for them. Or, or maybe it's not the right time for us to get involved. And, and they're, they're, they're really not to the point they need to be to receive significant help from our um, organization. I'll hand them off to Scott and his team. Or in another group that's also uh, available is the SBA. So the SBDC is around Ohio. Um, there are people there who help small businesses that are maybe early startup times too. And, and we're not in a position to help them. We, we help connect them to those types of individuals who, can, who their focus is getting that um, entrepreneur off the ground. Then conversely, when those organizations have had a company and they've been helping them and assisting them in the early stages, when they are ready to either prototype or do some small run production, or they need some assistance with, we've got this idea that the prototype's working pretty well, but we need some help in this one area, or we, or we need to start scaling this up. Where do we turn to? We don't want to go to overseas and be, lose that production over there. We want to be local. Then they'll bring them to us. So it goes back and forth, depending on who the company is, what we've learned about the company 
And when they move up the pipeline of commercialization, we'll get involved and bring all of our resources at the appropriate time. Because uh, what we've had is, is if you mismatch that, then I'm spending my our time with our team and we're burning a bunch of hours and we're not getting anywhere because we don't have the right resources for where they are at that point. So that's where it really makes it very meaningful that we will get the company to the organization that they need um, when they need it. And, and one thing I didn't mention also is there's, there's a group of folks in the state of Ohio. It's, a, it's actually funded by the federal government. They help with um, taking a manufacturing company or somebody that's producing a product and how to sell it overseas so we can connect people to those exporting uh, individuals as well. And you know them as well as I do, Tim. So uh, depending on where the company is, we were glad to help and assist, but sometimes it's better to hand them to exactly where they need to be. Very good. Any downside, any pitfalls with the, the tools that you see? Uh, not that I've seen so far. I mean, our downside is where, where I had to learn this. We've been doing this for eight years. I'll tell you this. Um, in the beginning, I tried to help them too long. And, and, and we had a small organization. We weren't as big as we are today. We've received more funding as we've built fast lane up. But I remember in the early years, we would, I would get involved and burn lots of hours of my own personal time or my people's time with an entrepreneur. And, and we were probably doing a disservice. We've learned there are, as we build our network up, let's not try to be, because we're, we're solution providers, right? We're problem solvers at heart. And we can try to do that too long when the fact is we aren't the right people to be talking to at that point in time. So we quickly look around and get them to somebody who's better capable, has better resources at their ability to, to jump in there and solve that problem quicker. So I mean, our name's Fastlane for a reason. We try to get solutions faster. And sometimes that means we need to get out of the way. So I think that works really well in our group. Our, our team understands this, having worked with many entrepreneurs and, and maybe had done a disservice in a few times and getting them to the better resources that can better help their current issue. Very good, Phil. Thank you. Hey, Dave, one for you, and that is tools at working with the, the Air Force and the DOD. Tell us about how your tools uh, match well with uh, the organizations there. Well, um, you know, the, the, the way the projects work, it requires that you have a verifiable need at one of the labs. And the labs in Dayton that are associated with AFRL you know, are the Air Force Research Lab, the Naval Medical Research Unit in Dayton, and the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. So, um, you know, w w during rounds, you know, we will uh, have information sessions where um, subject matter experts from those labs are on the calls, calls now because we're doing things virtually, um, to uh, describe what their areas of interest are, uh, to answer any questions that people might have about what their requirements might be. Um, and then uh, as people are going through the proposal process, you know, we'll help get them connected to the, to the right subject matter expert within those labs, depending on what their technology is that they're looking to propose and, and what they need as far as validation for their proposal. So, you know, it really does require when you put a proposal in that you, you you're able to name somebody who you've spoken with who can vouch for the fact that you have spoken and you, you know, you have verified that there is a need and, and that person within the lab is able to say, yes, that team is actually addressing something that, that we have identified that is a, a need for us to go forward. So, um, you know, we work as that connector in the middle. Um, and, uh, you know, if you pass through and you have a winning proposal, you know, we grease the skid a little bit more with some funding, you know, to, to make sure that you're, you know, you're connecting tightly with the inside uh, support person in, in the lab. Very good. Um, uh, well, I want to say um, thank you for uh, both of you being on the, the panel here. I'd like to uh, ask, is there any websites or any information where people can get, learn more about your organizations? Phil, how about you? Yes, um, go to www.fastlane.com. F A S T L A N E dash M E P dot org. All right, very good. And Dave, how about OFRN? Uh, OFRN, you can go to OhioFRN.org and you can download the latest uh, pre solicitation now um, and uh, see what the program's about. And uh, you can also hit a team matchmaking link, you know, if you're looking to get into a proposal process and and are, are looking for a partnership based on one of the areas of interest that are in the solicitation. Very good, thanks Dave.
And uh, from Jobs Ohio, it's jobsohio.com as you want to learn more about state incentives and our role to support that. State of Ohio, we're very committed to the small business uh, ecosystem and to build it and make it stronger. So thank you for the two of you uh, being on the panel and your insight into uh, the state of Ohio's connection to small business. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Tim.